Well, you couldn't have scripted this end of this Pro 4 season better, tied up going to the last round. It started like this, and then we both uh, plateaued, and, and that's where we've been all season. And it's brought us to this day right here, the last round of the torque season, and it all comes down to one race. Four points down to Johnny Greaves, and so pretty much have to win. Bottom line, he wants to beat me and I want to beat him, and unfortunately sometimes it got a little dirty in the process. RJ lands on top of Johnny Greaves! Five points straight! Johnson looks down to the inside, heavy contact! It's a do or die. There's no point race, this is Super Bowl. Whoop -ah! Traxxas Torque Series presented by Amsoil, the first event of the year was also the first ever off-road race held at the Redbud track in Buchanan, Michigan. Redbud provided the Pro 4 drivers with an early theme for the 2011 season. Sometimes winning isn't just about skill. Sometimes winning comes down to who can best weather the storm. Yeah! woo -hoo! I'm glad we got this in for the fans because, uh, Definitely uh, want to put on a show for all the Redbud fans. We're coming out. It's awesome. Scott drove a great race. Kept filling my, my shield full of mud and couldn't get out of here. The two main contenders for the Pro 4 Championship revealed themselves at the third event of the season under the bright lights of Charlotte Motor Speedway. Coming on your right, looking on your right. And they make contact over the jumps. On your right, Galera, Galera. RJ lands on top of Johnny Greaves. You want to say that we're all good buddies and we're all good friends and everything, but we're not. Ricky being emotional, I think, can hurt him in places and help him, depending. If you're big enough for you, you need to take a shot. Go! Take it! It was more of a protective thing, and I'm sure his kids would be mad if the same thing, if someone went and landed on his dad, and the tire hit my dad in the back of the head, so it could have been bad. It could have been a lot worse than it turned out. Woo! It wasn't aiming for you, bro. I went straight off the cuff, and I never once turned into you. When I landed on you there, I was going straight for the corner. Dude, you were swapping so many times and you never listened, but whatever, I probably did the same thing, right? We're ready for the win. No, I, congratulations, you were the best driver tonight. You drove a good you right. I guess it's it's great for the sport and great for the fans, and uh, you know, it, it, it brings fans to our camp, definitely, because they, they love to talk about it, and it, it creates a lot of excitement, so. You know, it's all good for all that stuff. Ricky Johnson and Johnny Greaves weren't atop the Pro 4 standings. Maybe the animosity between them would have ended in Charlotte. But they were, and it didn't. I have to say, it's, it's an honor to be in a, in, a, in a title chase with a guy like Johnny Greaves, who's the winningest guy in short course. And we've given it to him sometimes this year, and, and he's beat us this, this year. Great, 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 great. He hung back, he jumped to start. I came off the jump, gave him the whole inside lane. He came, he, he over jumped the jump, and went straight into me. Looking inside, looking inside, still there, still there. Just hold your line here, hold your line. Yeah, I'm emotional, but I, it makes me more focused, you know? Um, getting hit on, getting rubbed on, people, people pissing me off. I don't lose my cool in the truck. It actually makes me focus more. Johnny and I have been the guys consistently going at it, <laughs> and going at it pretty spectacularly. 
you ran into me and knocked my rear end out of me. Yeah, I know it, I know it. Just, I, yeah, be real easy, be real easy with it. From one battle to another, and, and honestly, this is what I've been blessed with my whole life, is it's just fierce adversaries, guys that, guys that make me dig as deep as I can, and right now, um, 100% want to beat him. Johnson again tries running the tighter inside lines in turn number one, not within striking distance of Greaves, now into the left-hand hairpin. Two turns remaining, Ricky Johnson, one truck left behind. Johnson looks down to the inside, heavy contact. Johnny, the outside wall, Ricky goes by the inside. Here's the Rick, that's how we do it. Johnson will take the win. Meanwhile, Johnny Greaves is off the track, pissed into the wall. How we doing right there, brothers? Set match, my friend. As the rest of the Pro 4 field crossed the finish line, Johnny Greaves' Monster Energy Toyota remained motionless only a few hundred feet away. That's Ricky being Ricky. He's just a f***ing baby-ass bitch. There's door to door. I didn't try to crash him. I can't, he, he messed up. I came to the inside. We hit. And I thought he finished right behind me. I didn't know he hit the wall. You never know what to expect from him. Depends what kind of mood he's in. I race my heart out. People don't like it. We're racing hard, that's all I know. You know, when you're a spoon-fed rich boy, I guess anything comes out of you. He don't, it never worked for nothing in his life, so he wouldn't know what it's like to have to fix shit. You hate to be in that situation, but it's checkers or wreckers, man. We, gotta, we have to win, and uh, honestly, I mean, I say it, but Honestly, I wouldn't trade it for the world. I, it's, this is the way it should be. I hope Johnny and I are banging doors all the way to the finish line and may the best man win. The battle between Johnny Greaves and Ricky Johnson for the Pro 4 Championship would be decided at the last event of the season in an old-fashioned Texas showdown. I mean, I, I came here to Cycle Ranch to take home a back-to-back -back championship, you know? I won in 2010. Uh, my plans are to win it in 2011 and uh, send Ricky packing. We're not expecting anything less. I mean, they're, here they are coming in, and, and winner takes all, basically. So uh, they qualified one and two. Uh, so I'm expecting today's going to be a dog fight, and they're going to be right at each other's throat the whole race. And uh, let's just hope that, uh, that they keep it clean and best man wins. We're just as fast as they are. I mean, out of the last five years, everybody talks like with, about Johnny Greaves. And in the last five years, I've beat him three out of the five years in the championship standings area. But you hear Johnny Greaves, and, and obviously you hear Ricky Johnson. And those guys have been just a tick quicker. It's going to be somewhat survival mode, I think. In the first part, we're going to run to the yellow and kind of get there. And then the race will be on. That last eight laps is going to be the race. And you know, if you can't get to the middle, it's not going to matter what you're, where you're at. We're good hell. Late stops? Yep. Is it, is it perfect now? Am I symmetrical? Am I going to roost properly? You look perfect. All right. I'm thinking California guys do that. <laughs> I'm not as afraid of my masculinity. I'll hug a man. I'll kiss a man on the cheek. So Texas guys, though, a little uh, homophobic. But Wisconsin guys, very homophobic. Come here. Come here, Johnny. Bring it in. Let's hug one last time before we really? each other. Really? <laughs> May the best man win, brother. Good luck. Oh, are you guys going to kiss or something? No, we had to get it out of the way because he's going to punch me after the race or one of the other, either or. All I care about is a win, so wherever that lays and wherever that falls, it falls. There we go. Ricky Johnson and Johnny Greaves would begin their showdown with the top two positions to start the race. Let's get her done, brother. Green flag, Pro 4 is underway. For the first time ever here at Cycle Ranch in San Antonio, Texas, we're heading to turn one. Ricky Johnson with a whole shot. Johnny Greaves the second. Greaves pressuring Johnson as they go through turn number one. Johnson with about three, four car length lead. Greaves in second. <laughs> Heading down the backstretch, Scott Douglas once again assumes that third spot. My plan was to go out there, run hard, um, be safe, be smart, and make sure that I'm in championship position for the, for the last round. So there was one point where I was getting away a little bit. All right, let's make it happen this time. And so I just clicked it to the next level and, and caught him. Looking on your left, looking on your left, coming on your left. On your left, on your left. 
was able to pass him before the yellow, and you know, I was I was pretty excited about that. Protect the inside. And of course, I gave it away right before the yellow. Contact made right at the competition yellow. I needed that. Yellow. And Greaves ultimately surrenders the lead back to Johnson on the final lap of the first half. We had a little couple little gremlins in the truck that started scaring me, so I. I maintained the second place, put it that way. I didn't want a DNF and uh, went fast enough to just stay where I needed to stay. Ricky Johnson, so much Angel lead. Johnny Grease still right there in second, about two car lengths behind. Mark Jenkins with a great run going here, and uh, I guess you could call it his hometown track in, in the state of Texas, running in third. Barlow running in fourth. He needs a really good run today. Nobody needs a 40 more than that guy. Have to drive in. There you go. You're hitting it. You're hitting it. Get it. Get it. Go. You're clear. 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 He's inside. He's inside. Stay with it. Stay with it. Quite honestly, I'm, I'm glad to see Barlow, you know, in there being competitive. Uh, he's had he's had a great career, and you know he's had had some challenges this season, but he's still every bit the competitor that he's always been. And you know the contact that we had between us was good, close racing. There you go. Yeah, yeah, you got it. You're clear. Go, 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 go. You got it. Clean. Go, go, go. No one got taken out as a result of it. I would expect that in Pro Four, you know, with the with the animals that are out there on track, but um, you know it's. It was a clean technique and no problem. I'll slap him on the back and congratulate him for a good race. Clear, you're clear. It's going to be on your inside. Clear. Go, go, go. You got two lanes. You got two lanes. Let's outside him. Turn right, on the podium right now. Let's go. Three to go. Three to go. Miss that hole. And you're outside. Get that speed slow. Go, 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 go. Battle for third place still heating up now as Mark Jenkins tries to put the pressure back on Barlow. Jenkins goes to the inside. When you're behind to try any lines, you can be a little more creative. When you're out front, you're wondering, if I try something big, is it going to spin me out? Am I going to crash? Am I going to give it away? That's the way to get it done, Rick. Way to get it done, buddy. Put him on it. Good work for that one, boy. Good run, good run. We got to get him tomorrow. Bad. Coming out of the final turn, Jenkins has that final podium spot. Barlow starts going around and he does. Barlow goes completely around. Mark Jenkins will finish on the third spot in the box. Ricky Johnson got the victory. Johnny Greaves got second place and the Oakley Bomb Award for fastest lap. The two drivers were now tied in points, which meant the Pro 4 championship would come down to the last race of the season. Bastard! He got me for the bomb, but I got him for the points. Um, Johnny Green's a champion, man. My hat's off to him. He made one mistake, and, and uh, getting into him wasn't getting into him. He spun out, came back into me, but well, I think he knows that. And Dyson close, got rubbed a little pain up there, but hey, Rubin's racing, and, and uh, now we're tied for the lead. Tomorrow the gloves are off. She's tied. <laughs> Gotta win. Whoever wins, wins this thing, and uh, it's over. Winner take all tomorrow, baby. Super Bowl. There's no no World Series, no second chance, no nothing. You know, we can sit back and, and could have, should have, would have with, with the DNFs that we had early in the year, but how, how much better can it, can it be? A guy that I almost got in fist fights with a couple times, we're going for the championship together, so may the best man win. Mark Jenkins held off Steve Barlow and finished third. I feel so to be here at San Antonio for the first time at Cycle Ranch. You know, it's, uh, it's a brand new facility to torque. Uh, in fact, off-road racing, so we hope the fans enjoyed it. Now I'm a redneck. I'm a Christian redneck. Thank you very much. Johnny Greaves and Ricky Johnson had grabbed the headlines in 2011, but plenty of other Pro 4 drivers in the Traxxas Torque Series presented by Amsoil had seasons they could be proud of. Scott Douglas, with one win and five podium finishes, was third in points behind Johnny and Ricky. The old veteran warhorse <laughs> never, never stops coming. He's like a Clydesdale. The grumpy, grouchy old bear, I don't know, <laughs> you know what you want to call him. <laughs> He's always mad about something. He's also huge, so you don't want him pulling you out of the truck to kick your ass. When we're not, you know, near Douglas, <laughs> we're running good. <laughs> oh, check this out. Scott Douglas gets into the left rear of Mark Jenkins. 
Don't time. worry, there'll be a time. <laughs> we'll see if we're good. <laughs> That's why I Not a too. problem. Not a problem, man. Good job. Good driving, Mark. We'll get to the front. Good job. The rivalry between Scott Douglas and Mark Jenkins was almost as intense as the one between Ricky and Johnny. And it proved that Mark Jenkins was one of the top competitors in the series. He drives a little, little too aggressively, and we get together out on the track. But you know, Mark will be the first one after the race, coming up and offering you a beer and saying, "Hey, you know, sorry about that hit out there. I didn't mean to get into you so hard." He does not take any quarter. I mean, he gives lots of quarter, but he takes none. If you touch on him, he's going to hit you. I've been known to tap on someone's rear bumper before we take a green flag, but you know, that's just me saying hi, being friendly. Pace truck is pulling off to the side. You see Mark Jenkins tapping Steve Barlow. Again, he taps him. And the green flag is waving worn away. Mark's brother, Mike Jenkins, is not just a Pro 4 driver. He is the owner of the Traxxas company and the Traxxas team. Probably one of the nicest, most giving guys out there, and he definitely loves this sport and love racing with the guy. He's just a class act. Yeah, Mike Jenkins. I believe has uh, a real large juggling act. I think he's too much business and not enough play. <laughs> it's amazing to me, because I see how many directions he gets pulled on a weekend, and that he can focus at all about being a driver. With Mike Jenkins with me, outstanding competitor. <laughs> he digs real hard. <laughs> Known as the Wild Man, Adrian Cheney entered 2011 with a reputation for crashing often and winning rarely. But after a dominating performance at Crandon's fall event, where he won all three races during the weekend, Adrian Cheney showed the rest of the field that it was finally time to take him seriously. Adrian Cheney, um, known as the Wild Man, and boy was he in his old years, uh, now he's smooth, calculated, and fast. I love that they came on the radio and said, don't worry, Adrian's going to run you clean. Then he plowed me in the next turn. Here comes Chaney trying the outside inside move on Johnson. Pulls up along inside. Chaney makes contact with Johnson. He'll move up one spot. Chaney back to second. All right, get her back up. Let's go. But you have to give it to the guy. When he's on, he's on. But when he's off, he's off. It's the wild man. If somebody thinks you can do something in a corner or off a jump, Adrian's the one to try it. So you, he's the wild man. <laughs> There's nothing, nothing else that describes him better. He's really improved his program this year, maybe with the help and the encouragement of, of Steve Barlow. And those two uh, synergizing and working together, I think it's probably elevated both of their games. 2011 was Steve Barlow's first year with Metal Militia as his primary sponsor. While only finishing on the podium twice, his consistency has him fourth in the point standings. Steve is one of those guys that when he gets behind you and he, if he thinks he has a shot of getting at you, he's going to take that shot. And I think he'll go past his ability to, to take it. So you got to love that in a driver that he'll give sometimes 110% to make that pass. You know, solid, solid. He's been around. For most of the Pro 4 field, the last race of the season was an opportunity to finish the season on a high note. For Johnny Greaves and Ricky Johnson, the last race of the season was an opportunity to take home a championship. For me, I have to I have to go with Johnny. I mean, it's Johnny's a Maxxis tire guy, and I'm Maxxis this year. And I mean, RJ, he's had a great year, but there's been some stuff that's happened that I think, you know, some calls at races that should have went a little harder against Ricky. Johnny is, uh, he's always a, a strong competitor. So it's, it's fun that they're, it's coming down to the last race. That's kind of how you want things to be. You couldn't have scripted this end of this Pro 4 season better, tied up going in the last round. It's going to be fun to watch. It's going to be fun to be a part of it. You know, it's, it's hard for me to find a favorite between those two guys. It's going to be a heck of a battle, and uh, I'll have to catch it on TV because I'm going to have a view that's different from what all you guys see. But I just hope that they finish and uh, put on a good show behind me uh, because it's, it, it's still about me. It's about my weekend and uh, uh, I, I still need to get that win here this year. You're not going to get me to take the bait on the, on the drama. <laughs> this has definitely been a pretty epic season for us to be this tight in a points battle. I mean, every single weekend, it's, it's like it never goes more than 10 or 12 points one way or the other, and it's been pretty intense, you know. It's, uh, Hard on my heart when I'm getting old. 
I've gone through so many different things in my life. You know, I've had my career taken away from me in motocross. I've had it taken away for all these different reasons, whether it be, you know, my health. Um, I was told I was too old by the Herzog, so at 35, given the, the gold watch and go retire, was a, definitely a hard pill to swallow. But to work my way back into the sport and not be a fluke, but to be a legitimate com competitor and contender for the championship, if I win this, it will be, it, it'll be right up on the top of my shelf with, with every race I've ever won. Honestly, we're going to probably let them uh, play. You know, I mean, we're not going to get, you know, too critical on how we officiate it. Other than that, good hard racing, side-by-side -side contact, we're okay with, and we're going to allow that. Ricky Johnson and Johnny Greaves were tied going into the last race of the season. Only one man would leave Texas the Pro 4 champion. It's, it's racing as, as usual, you know, winner take all. I, I'm, I'm heartbroken if I, if I lose, and I'll definitely be heartbroken if I lose today, so let's get it on. I hope we can all race each other clean and uh, get to the front of this thing and have a man-to-man -man war, but uh, time to uh, nut up and do it. It's like this for what we live for, buddy. I'll come here in the second row. Because Jenny fits trucks, so we had to go to the back. Uh, 10 4. Good luck, bro. All right, John, 16 laps. Good luck. 10 4. I'll call the green. Marty said the track got a lot of bite, so let's get her, dude. Here it is, Shane. This is what it's going to come down to after a long 2011 season. Whichever driver finishes in front of the other, Ricky Johnson or Johnny Grease will win the championship. So the green flag's about to come out. Already a problem at the start with Steve Barlow getting sideways in front of the traffic. There's going to be no start, so ease up real easy. No start. Yellow, yellow. Ease up real easy, real easy, real easy. Keep rolling, keep rolling. And that doesn't happen very often in off-road racing, but the thing is, when Barlow is starting in the front, it's sideways, blocks all the traffic except Jenkins and Douglas. They pulled away. They try to make it as fair a start as possible, and this is the only way to do it, right here with the complete restart. And of course, when the uh, pace truck pulls off, then the field comes under the control of the person on the pole. In this case, it was Scott Douglas. Looked like he was a little bit too eager and took off before Barlow was quite ready to go. Barlow couldn't catch up, got loose, and that's where the problem started. Deep breath, Rick. Deep breath, loose hands. Keep yourself relaxed. Well, it looks like our front row's back in order. Barlow on the outside, Douglas on the inside, our pole sitter. This is a great way for him to end the season if he can hang out of that spot starting the front row. Douglas will take control of the field as they come once again onto the front straight. And again, Douglas outruns Barlow a little bit as they come to the green flag. There's the green. Looks like a clean start, though, this time as the field heads down into turn number one. How about that? Mark Jenkins jumps right in front of Johnny Greaves, heading to turn one. Greaves slides a little bit in the back bumper, making contact. Ricky's right behind you. And go figure like uh, two magnetized trucks. Johnson and Greaves have found each other in the field once again, running in third and fourth. All about Douglas and Jenkins right now is they're out front. Very predictable to see Scott Douglas starting the front row, beginning to pull away so a little bit from the rest of the field as they're jockeying for position. It's Greaves and Johnson side by side to the infield. Looks like Johnson will have the advantage momentarily as they come to the right-hander, but Greaves on the inside pushes his way back in front of Johnson, so Greaves takes control of the third spot. And Johnson comes right back. Now he's set for the inside for the left-hand turn as his truck gets a little, I guess, uh, tail happy coming off one of the jumps. Greaves on the outside as they come back onto the front straight for the Red Bull finish line. Side by side again, Johnson and Greaves. This is for a championship. The heck with the win. This is for the championship. Whichever driver finishes one or the other will win it for 2011. Right now, Johnson's going back after Greaves. Greaves has the spot. Less than a truck length in between Greaves and Johnson as they go to the back stretch once again, and both drivers catching up to Mark Jenkins, who's running in second. Now it looks like they'll pull apart from one another for the moment. What an interesting way of looking at this. Are they racing each other or are they racing way to the front? I mean, what is the psyche? What is the game plan? Is it once again, they pull along side by side, heading to the right hand turn. Greens will once again, they'll be on the inside. Looks like Johnson this time trying to set up the outside in. Johnson goes way to the low side. The Greens found a little bit more speed coming out, so Johnson found a line right there that maybe didn't work for him. 
Alright, he's gonna dive to the inside. He's gonna dive to the inside. They're still side by side battling for third between Johnson and Greaves. Meanwhile, Douglas up front, Mark Jenkins running in second. And Mark Jenkins in that second spot could very well prove to be an X-Factor in this points chase between Greaves and Johnson. We know that Jenkins isn't afraid of any kind of contact, so both Greaves and Johnson are going to have to be very careful as they try to work their way around into second place. Well, you can see in certain spots this track already starting to run up. Keep in mind, this is what they call virgin track, a virgin dirt. It hasn't had a chance to sit and take in for like a year or two through the weather. So right now, every single lap, this track is actually changing as Jenkins Kyle drives the outside wall. Jenkins is off track. Go, 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 go. You're clear. Greaves and Johnson both able to get cleanly by Mark Jenkins. Now nothing between them and our race leader, Scott Douglas. All clear. Clear by four. Clear by four. Johnson now moves to the top three. So we have Douglas up front, Greaves in second, and Ricky Johnson in third. Johnson again looks to the inside of Johnny Greaves as they come back onto the front straight. Keep working him here, buddy. Keep working him. All clear from behind. 56 7. I'm starting to think, Shane, that they don't care about who finishes where. They're all going for the win. They're not playing the points game as Jenkins gets up on two wheels. Jenkins goes up and over. Now he's stuck in a kind of precarious spot on the course. Not sure if the spotters will even be able to see that the truck is there, so the drivers coming through have to be very careful as they make their way around. Meanwhile, the battle for second still raging on. Greaves holds the advantage over Ricky Johnson. I'm telling you right now that it looks like we've seen this so many times in the past, Shane, where Johnson and Greaves have played each other early in the race, watch each other line. Right now, it's almost like they didn't want to be the leader of the two. They want to be the one running in second. So right now, it looks like Greaves has the second spot, and Johnson's just playing him a little bit. Full course yellow here, Rich. Full course yellow. Full course yellow is out as we try to take care of the Mark Jenkins situation on the exit of turn number one. Scott, to add to your point, you said that Greaves might not be comfortable in front of Johnson. He's already expressed a couple times this year that in close battles during the race, oftentimes the guy in front is way more vulnerable at shots being taken by the guy behind. Yeah, after you make this lap, after, after that big table toss, he's setting up a little bit wider and getting it rotated and coming out right next to you. Ten four. Uh, uh, after that, that left, or that right-hander, you're doing good there. Uh, the only other place is for the finish line corner, he's staying really tight. As it uh, looks like Mark Jenkins catching his way back up to the tail end of the field here on our full course caution lap. It looks like the truck might be in pretty decent shape as it's going over some of the rougher terrain, some of the jumps, mostly cosmetic. We'll find out real quick in a lap or so if there's any damage to the suspension area. Um, you know, I, I guess the thing I got to bring up right now is earlier this weekend, uh, uh, Ricky Johnson's son Luke wadded up his pro light really, really bad. In fact, he couldn't finish the race weekend because they couldn't finish that truck up, but uh, get it get repaired. How much I wonder that plays into the psyche of Ricky right now. Gotta get by Douglas right away and put him in between you. Yeah. You know though, if you get if you got a chance on Douglas right away, be clean. Because they're gonna throw a flag if they can on anything. Well, it looks like our Ram Runner pace truck is pulling off, so we're about to go back to Green Flag Racing. Once again, Scott Douglas will take the field back onto the front straight. Second Johnson, third, Jenny running in fourth. We also have Steve Barlow running the top five. Green flag is out as they hit the turn number one. Douglas at the point, wants this win. What a way it would be to end the 2011 season on the top spot. Greaves with a lot of pressure on Douglas as they go through turn number one. Actually, Greaves outpacing Johnson a little bit as well. Clear by two. Come on, let's get him. Work this inside. He's not going to run this inside. Get low. Johnny Greaves aggressively going after Douglas, trying to put a gap between himself and Ricky Johnson. Here comes Greaves the inside. Looks like he'll have the point. They're almost three wide for a moment. Corner, hold on. Slow it down. There you go. There you go. Side by side, and finally Douglas pushes his way back in front. Now they go three wide to the right-hander. Contact between Johnson and Greaves now. Still there. Drive right under him here, bud. Somehow Greaves is able to hang on to it. They're still side by side to the left-hand turn. Ricky gonna try to come back to the inside. Johnny has the spot. Greaves will hang on to second. And Douglas, through all the drama, holds on to the lead. Clear by four. Clear by four. Solid four. Unbelievable aggression so early on in this race between
between Greaves and Johnson. Even the slash minute contact could take either driver out of the straight. This is the kind of racing that we're used to seeing in the second half of races, but with so much on the line here in our last round of 2011, these guys, like you like to say it, they're taking off the gloves. Johnson sliding through the corner, trying to make up ground for second on Greaves. Douglas still maintains the point. All right, Rick, set him up up here, buddy. Reeves again putting a lot of pressure on Douglas, looking for the inside line to the right-hander, but Douglas at this point pretty much playing defense on Johnny Greaves. And once again, we go back about four or five laps ago, and it looks like Johnson may be just watching, taking a little homework, watching where Greaves is going, and finding and kind of picking and choosing where he might make a run at him. Another lap in the books, one, two, and three, still running very close to one another as they come into turn number one. Come on, he's right there, he's right there. Coming out of turn number one, Grease goes a little bit wide. Douglas up front. It will open the door just for a moment for Ricky Johnson to go inside of Greaves, but Greaves will hang on to the spot. At this point, Scott, it looks like Johnny Greaves has to quit worrying about trying to get around Douglas because Johnson is going to take advantage of any mistake Greaves will make. He's going to go underneath you. Johnson, heavy pressure, even tapped the back bumper of Greaves going into the right hand turn. Johnson bites it up on the uh, tire marker to the inside of the course, but now Greaves is going after Douglas for the lead. Greaves and Douglas actually made a little bit of contact. Now Greaves will set up, looks like maybe an outside in move on Douglas. Douglas able to hang out of the spot, but what that does is also brings Johnson back into the move. We've got a three truck battle for the lead. Another time into turn number one, Greaves all over the back bumper of Douglas with Johnson still on the back bumper of Greaves. One, two, and three. I hate to quote this, but man, throw a blank over our top three trucks. They are so tight right now. And all of a sudden, now Douglas has to be the aggressor. He has got a miracle of not one, but two trucks. They're battling for a championship. Clear, 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 clear. He's coming, he's coming on the inside, he's coming on the inside. Johnson for a moment pushes ahead of Johnny Greaves, and Johnson gets into it with Douglas. Greaves goes to the inside. Now Greaves and Douglas side by side, battling for the lead. All three trucks made contact in one turn. Greaves gets sideways, Douglas gets in the... Oh, Greaves now turned around. Never comes to a complete stop, but back underway. Step out, Rick. Soft hands here, buddy. Still got soft hands. Is everything all right? Reeves just got a little bit crossed up, and it couldn't have happened at a worse time because Douglas was right there, gave him the tap that sent him around, and now that puts Johnson in the lead. Greaves all the way back to third. What Greaves was hoping to happen as he was battling for the lead with, with Douglas just a lap ago has come back to bite him hard as now it's Johnson up front, Douglas in second, and Greaves in third. Laps are winding down here in the first half. Johnson, at this point, pretty much no pressure from Douglas as they come to the right-hand hairpin where all the action happened just one lap ago. At one point, Greaves was battling Douglas for the lead, trying to put Douglas between himself and Johnson. Let us come back to fight him real hard, because right now, it's Johnson up front, Douglas in second, and also now Johnny Greaves in third. So as the competition yell is about to come out, this is where it's going to get real ugly, because now Johnson has gained two points on Johnny Greaves for those bonus points for leading at the halfway point. Bonus points or no bonus points for Ricky Johnson. What it comes down to at this point is in the second half, Johnny Greaves absolutely has to get in front of Ricky Johnson if he wants a shot at the points championship. You can just imagine what's going on inside the helmet of all these drivers right now, specifically Greaves and Johnson, going all the way back to Charlotte where it all began. truck is about to pull off. We've gotten word that Johnny Greaves is having some kind of mechanical issue. There's also speculation that Ricky Johnson may be having a mechanical issue. So the stage is set for the second half. Meanwhile, he got Scott Douglas in the middle as we're about to take the green flag for the second half of the race. 
and it's waving right now. Ricky Johnson gets a great jump off the line. If he's having problems right now, it sure doesn't look like it. Dreams falling back a bit on the restart as the field comes into turn number one. Douglas, heavy contact with Ricky Johnson. Are you done? Breeze definitely has mechanical issues. He's still under power. We'll see how long he's going to wait. Oh, Jenkins gets around one more time. Tough break for Mark Jenkins. We go back up front, and there it is, Shane. There is the championship pulling off the side of the track. All clear, all clear. Looks like Reeves pulled off the track here. All clear. Quiet again, Rick. That tire's still there. So whatever part it was that was failing on Johnny Green's truck has finally let go. His day is done, and the 2011 championship will belong to Ricky Johnson. Meanwhile, a little bit further back, we had Steve Barlow bouncing off an inside tire marker, put himself off the track, but got back on. And right there is a very dejected Johnny Greaves. His season is done, his race is done, and the championship is going to somebody else. Back out front, Ricky Johnson. Now he gets to do some victory laps here on his, uh, to cap off his 2011 season. Douglas still keeping in touch with him, running in second, though, as they head for the back stretch. This has got to be one of those circumstances where the driver has a rhythm. Don't break the rhythm if he's going flat out. Keep going flat out. You know, sometimes the guys, they slow down a little bit, try to save the truck, it breaks the rhythm, and that's when things happen. Meanwhile, Johnny Green's just trying to, I guess, soak up the whole season on what just took place. Further back in the field, Adrian Chenny trying to close the gap. Oh, it looks like a part let go on the left front of the truck. Big trouble for Adrian Chenny. I think he was battling for fourth place. It looks like he'll pull off now. And talk about, I guess, a contrast of, of what's taking place. You got Ricky Johnson going right by now, a, a part of Johnny Grease. One driver with the championship in hand, the other the driver basically handing it to him as he crossed underneath the Red Bull finish line one more time. Douglas still has an outside shot to try and catch Ricky Johnson. But right now, is Scott Douglas going to go for it for that last one of the year, or is he going to settle for second place? Scott, it's worth pointing out that Johnny Greaves was your defending Pro 4 champion. He took the championship in the 2010 season. Ricky Johnson, of course, was the defending Pro 2-wheel drive champion. And he'll become the first driver to ever win the Pro 2-wheel drive championship and the Pro 4x4 championship in back-to-back -back years. So once again, that guy's making history. But I guess right now it's, again, is it's almost rubbing his nose in it because there's just still a few laps remaining. Johnny Greaves in the sidelines, Ricky Johnson going on by. Uh, you know, it still looks like he's going very fast, not saving the truck one bit as he goes in that final turn. But, uh, you know, that Ram has been strong all year long. I mean, there's been, we could talk about the controversy, recap, recap everything that's been going on. But right now, it's all about Ricky Johnson to finish up this race and claiming back-to-back -back championships, like you said, in two different classes. Hey, and don't forget who took the Pro Two-Wheel Drive Championship this year in 2011. It was Ricky's teammate, Bryce Menzies. So not a bad year all in all for the Menzies team. Not a bad year at all for Ram when you think about it because Ram, uh, Andrew Cadell won in Pro Light, Ricky Johnson Pro 4, and like you said, Bryce Menzies in Pro 2. So a very strong year, introductory year to off-road racing for uh, Mopar and Ram. So once again, Ricky Johnson hanging out of that top spot. It doesn't look like at this point that Scott Douglas is being overly aggressive. But a little bit further back, uh, Mike Jenkins uh, looks like he's trying to get back into the mix of things. He might want to go after that second spot at the podium. Still a lot of time left, and we know Mike Jenkins is a hard charger. Did you have the fastest lap, or do I need to put one in? No, Reeves is clear. You're clear by 20 here. I know. I want to know if I have the fastest lap, so I need to put one in to get the bomb. I believe you got it, but we can double check. I think I'd rather just win the championship. Tire's still there. You know, Shane, I think 2011 has been a year of the super teams. You've got uh, the Menzies Red Bull Ram team winning two championships in Pro 2 and Pro 4. And then in Pro Light, you've got the Jenkins brothers and Andrew Cadell in another Ram winning a championship. Yeah, not only did three Rams take all three Pro championships, Scott, but all three of those Rams running BF Goodrich tires, so not a bad year for them as well. And we're looking at uh, Mike Jenkins right now, also on BF Goodrich tires. Uh, very, very strong year for this team. And, you know, they haven't been around for very long both Mike and Mark in the off-road world, but still the learning curve is there and they're getting better and better, especially Mark this last half of the year, uh, getting his nose in there and not being, a, not being afraid to be aggressive with some of these top drivers. Yeah, and both Jenkins brothers have actually sort of become crowd favorites as well because anytime either one of them gets involved in a close battle, anything could happen and we've seen a lot happen this year. 
Ricky Johnson still maintains a very comfortable lead up front. Scott Douglas running in second, and Amsoil Ford running in third. Once again, it's Mike Jenkins that tracks to the 47 Ford. You know, it's, you know, we mentioned super teams. Well, you know what, there's also, we got mentioned Scott Douglas has had a pretty good year. Uh, if it wasn't for that stellar year of Ricky Johnson and Johnny Greaves, Scott Douglas has almost been like the ghost uh, running in third almost every single race. Yeah, and Amsoil has actually been very pleased with Scott Douglas all year as well. They've actually re-signed him into 2012 and beyond, so the, the Amsoil-Scott Douglas partnership will continue to grow. It looks like right now on the track, Scott Douglas is really is not going to try and track down Ricky Johnson. Uh, probably a two, two and a half second lead right now. Mike Jenkins uh, behind is equally as far back behind Scott Douglas for our top three trucks right now. Not really being over aggressive. I think they finally realized that there's just a lap or two left. In fact, the white flag is waving for our leader and our 2000 limit champion, Ricky Johnson, Shane. And a full straightaway lead he's got over Scott Douglas now. I think you were uh, right on the head there that Scott Douglas at this point pretty much just cruising here, a Sunday drive as you called it earlier. Mike Jenkins waiting in the wings in third, hoping something happens to either of the top two trucks so he can move up. Kurt Graves is over here congratulating everybody already, so sign of respect. It ain't over yet. No. Driver has been known to step on the driver too, so I can still the up. Mike Jenkins, uh, you know, you, you talk about this, this being their home track. Well, they're from the Dallas area, both him and Mark. Oh, Douglas is off the track. Douglas has stopped and off the track. He's back underway, but now Douglas has fallen back at least one spot. And Douglas is well off the pace. Meanwhile, Ricky Johnson into the final turn of the 2011 season. Nice job, Rick. Nice job, everybody. Taking a checkered flag, your 2011 Pro 4 champion, Ricky Johnson. You did it! Yes! 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 yes. An awesome job. Definitely excited to give you that. Oh! Meanwhile, second across the line was Mike Jenkins, so he got what he wished for. That Douglas pulled off, he was able to move up one spot, and Steve Barlow with a very respectable third. Once again, your 2011 Pro 4 champion, Ricky Johnson. In his first year as a Pro 4 driver, not much was expected of Ricky Johnson but he emerged from the last race of the season and from his Texas showdown with Johnny Greaves as the Pro 4 champion of the Traxxas Torque Series presented by Amsoil. Thank Johnny Greaves for making me honest, man. I mean, you made this old fat dude lose a lot of sleep. And uh, I want to thank my wife because she has to deal with PRS, you know, it's, it's a lot worse than PMS. Pre-race syndrome and post-race syndrome, I, I can become quite a bitch and uh, her and the family stick behind me, so. We just got out in front, Johnny made a mistake, and then it was just be smooth, be clean. Important bring in this championship for Red Bull Ram, KMC, Amsoil, the lifeblood of this thing, man. I beat the crap out of it, Amsoil just keeps it rolling. So that, motive gear, Fox shocks, be of good risk tires, man, we have the best tires. We're out there, we get a bunch of Maxxes. BFG's champion about for one and two. Hop up here, guys. Hey, that's my ass. Someone's fingers in. <laughs> With Bryce Menzies winning the Pro 2 Championship, Ricky's victory put Red Bull and Menzies Motorsports atop two of the three pro classes in the Traxxas Torque Series presented by Amsoil. Woo! So for me, I don't, I don't gloat in beating Johnny Grease because I think he's one of the best in the world. In, in car control and what he does and the whole family is as hard as they work, it means the world to me to race and to beat somebody like that. He beat me a lot this year. Adrian Chinney kicked our ass. We couldn't even see him. And But but Johnny Greaves, it, it was an honor to race with him. But this will go down for the rest of my life as one of the greatest battles I've ever had for a championship. And it's awesome to do it with somebody that I call my brother and have my family here. You know, the only one that's not here is my son Jake, but he's back pursuing his lacrosse dream. Dream kick ass, Jake. The season for the Traxxas Torque Series presented by Amsoil may be over, but there's one more race to be run. A cup race from Crandon International Raceway between Pro 4 and Pro 2 drivers. We'll also pay tribute to our military and pay our respects to the memory of Rick Huseman. <laughs>